Chuck, we all set to start. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, here in person and for those on the Zoom. Uh, we do have Commissioner Mike Oresco with us. Our, our format will be as it's been for uh, the games. You know, Commissioner will give some, some brief opening remarks, uh, after which we'll take questions from those in the room. And then uh, anyone on the Zoom, if you have a question, feel free to use the raise your hand feature and we'll get to you after, the, after those in the room. Uh, with that, Commissioner, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Chuck. Appreciate all that Chuck's done uh, uh, throughout the entire week. And, and also, you know, Carl Hicks, who has done an unbelievable job with our basketball and uh, best is, is yet to come, you know, for this conference. And Tom O'Jackson has been working very hard uh, with Kari Black on our TV. So I'm very pleased to recognize them. Uh, yeah, I also want to acknowledge Air Force Reserve. You know, they've been our title sponsor for the women and the men's tournament and great people. And I know we've had a, a you know, we've, we've offered uh, a free ticket when somebody, uh, a veteran buys a ticket. And we think that that's a, you know, a worthy thing that, that, that you know, um, you know, Air Force Reserve is working with us on that. And we're very pleased. Uh, Dickey's Arena, an incomparable place. You've all seen it. You all know what, what a, I don't know that there's a nicer arena in the country. Certainly it's among the best. And uh, Matt Homan and uh, his staff, Stephanie Myers has been his point person. Uh, they just do an unbelievable job. I want to give a shout out to them. Also, congratulate the UCF women's team on their championship. Coach Abe, uh, Katie Abrahamson Henderson, done a great job at that program. And uh, we're, you know, again, I'm uh, pleased to mention them. Uh, we've got really two terrific semifinal games today. Uh, Tulane has, uh, Ron Hunter has just done a spectacular job, as you know, with Tulane. Uh, it should be an interesting game today. Uh, Houston. Uh, you know, not sure what their, their seed will be, but, uh, you know, it should be intense. Uh, and, uh, you know, Kelvin Sampson, as you know, is our coach of the year, and he, he's earned it. This is one of those great coaching jobs, losing the players he lost the two, um, you know, Traymon and Marcus. So that's, that's a big deal. And he still managed to bring that team through to a, a regular season championship, uh, and, and, and we'll have them poised to, to have a good run in the NCAA tournament again. Uh, Memphis SMU, that's, that's you know, in some ways the game of the day. Uh, Memphis is playing probably as well as anyone right now. Uh, you saw, uh, you know, yesterday what they can do, the, the athleticism. You know, uh, they, they've really come around. Things have really started to gel for them. Uh, I did a double take, you know, seeing Larry Brown on the on the bench also as you know, helping coach the team, you know, as you know, very interesting dynamic today. You know, he had been the SMU coach for a number of years and, and, and developed that program and, you know, had the, uh, you know, had Moody, uh, you know, Moody Magic really rocking. So it's going to be an interesting uh, dynamic today. Um, SMU, as you know, finished second in the regular season. We think they're, they're a tournament team. I don't think there's any question in my mind that they are. Uh, they've obviously got, you know, something they're going to try to prove today and try to get to the championship game and, and possibly even get an automatic seed, but uh, excuse me, automatic bid. But, but I think they deserve one anyway. I think we should be a three bid league. Um, so anyway, I'm ha happy to answer questions, but thrilled to have you here. Glad you're, you're here to enjoy it. Good weather today. Finally, I went out for a walk yesterday. It, was, it seemed like it was 10 degrees wind chill. I felt like I was back in New England. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, happy to answer questions, Chuck. I, I don't know how you want to do that, but uh... we'll take questions now. Uh, raise your hand in the room. We'll get a uh, microphone over to you. Hey, Mike. Joe Hoy, Dallas Morning uh, News. Oh, Joe. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. 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 yeah good to see you. Um, nice to see you. Yeah. You know, a couple of coaches uh, throughout this tournament have kind of voiced a little bit of you know, feelings of disrespect from the rest of the country when it comes to how the AAC is looked at from a tournament and projection standpoint. I'm just curious what your thoughts are on, you know, how the American fits in on an overall respect level from a tournament perspective. Yeah, you know, Joseph, I don't think there's any question about that. And I'm not sure why, to be honest with you, because this conference, if you look at what we've done in the tournament, it's been pretty impressive. And you look at conferences that have gotten more bids than we have, and they haven't done as well in the tournament. You know, last year we had a final 14 when UConn was in the league we won the national championship you know we uh we've had uh you know sweet 16 teams we've had you know an elite eight team um a few years ago you may recall Houston lost that heartbreaker to Michigan and Michigan goes to the championship game Houston might have Cincinnati had an unbelievable team that year and then somehow lost that 23 point lead I'm not sure how it happened they've been having watched it uh and Cincinnati was a perennial uh you know tournament team 
Uh, a few years ago, Houston uh, takes in the Sweet 16 takes Kentucky right to the wire, leading by three with 48 seconds left uh, against a, a top Kentucky team. Uh, we all remember UCF almost beating Zion Williamson and Duke, and it should have been a couple of bad bounces or they would have won the game. Uh, and think about that. These are tremendous performances by teams that are really good teams. The one thing, the middle of our league, certainly I don't think has gotten the respect. You know, sure, some teams are up and down. They don't, you know, their records are not, you know, 25 and, and, and four, but they are good, solid teams and they've upset people during the year. Uh, I think, yeah, we were a new conference 10 years ago. We were reinvented. I think that had something to do with it. You may recall the first year, SMU should have been a tournament team. Every All the, all the pundits had them uh, not only in the tournament, but a, a fairly decent seed and, even, and they didn't make it. And, and they had an outstanding team. Um, so anyway, I, I guess you just have to keep fighting. It's like football, you know, we, uh, you don't have that G5, P5 divide in basketball. You get a little of that nonsense, but not much. Uh, but you still have to overcome a certain perception. You know, we're not in the Northeast either. A lot of the writers, I guess, are based in the Northeast. And, you know, there might be a, a, a that might be a factor. Although, you know, you look at basketball in, in our region, uh, where, where most of our teams are, and it's awfully good basketball, of course, you know, and, and I, I tip my hat to the Big 12 for being a tremendous conference. I tip my hat to our conference for being a terrific conference. Um, let's see what we do again in the tournament this year. You know, we've, we've shown that we can play with anyone, uh, and I think we will this year. I wouldn't be surprised if one of our teams gets pretty far. Uh, so anyway, but Joseph, you know, I, I don't have any great answer for you, you know. Other questions? Hey, Mike. Hey, jo Joseph, how are you? Good. Yeah, two um, Josephs there. Yeah, back to back. <laughs> uh, Mike, can you, do you have an update on, on just where, where things stand in terms of uh, the, the comings and the goings and, and where you would like to get things resolved in, in terms of exit dates? All that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought I'd get that question and it's a it's a legitimate question. Uh, we're, we're talking, uh, you know, we think we've made some progress. A couple of things I would point out though that I think are important to note. One is we don't have to talk to anyone. Um, we're not required to, you know, our bylaws are very clear and we strongly support bylaws being enforced because otherwise college, college conferences collapse, you know, in terms of, of how they run and how they operate. So we're, we're a strong proponent of that. Uh, and, and, you know, we've told our, you know, our, our members, uh, excuse me, our new members that they come in when the others leave, you know, in all likelihood, we're not, we wouldn't take them unless they had a right to leave. Uh, and they, they're, they're fine with that. They fully understand. And then they're totally on board with that. But we don't have to be talking to the three departing schools, but we are. And we are because if they would like to leave early and they've uh, evinced a desire to leave uh, a year early, then we're, we're more than willing to talk to them and see if we can't reach a, you know, a settlement, which is typically a financial settlement. And that's what we're working on now. Now, have we gotten closer? Yes. Are we there yet? No, we're not. And if we don't get there, then we would just say, fine, we'll, we'll stop the, the negotiations and, and you would stay till uh, July 1, 24, which they've said they would do if, if we ultimately can't reach agreement. I'm hoping we can if, in fact, they want to leave and it does appear that they do. It appears the Big 12 would be willing to take them in, in 2000, you know, 23, 24. But the Big 12 is, I think, made a point that they're not taking them unless they have a, a right to go. I think uh, Bob has made those statements. You can, you can, you know, check and correct me if I'm wrong. So uh, at this point, the, continue, the discussions continue. You know, they're all good friends. You know, Chris Pesman has been one of our stalwarts, as you know, John Cunningham, Terry Mahadra hadn't been in the league as long as they've been. But uh, we're trying to do it amicably and we, you know, we've had, unfortunately, I've had a, a little more experience than you would, you would like to have with this. You know, we, we obviously worked it out with UConn pretty, pretty quickly. This one's a little more complicated. You know, you have three schools, you know, pretty important schools have huge impact in, in football, which is a sport, as you know, that drives so much of this, but they also have significant basketball pedigree as well. So uh, again, we'll, we'll keep talking. Uh, we hope to get something resolved. If, if they're going to, um, if we're going to reach a settlement for them to exit earlier in 23, and again, we have no obligation to do that and we're happy to have them stay more than happy to have them stay. It's probably got to be done fairly soon. You know, we've got some deadlines we're looking at with schools that would like to come in potentially and have to give their notices as well. So there's, you know, there's, there's some urgency to our discussions. Uh, and that's probably best uh, description, Joseph, at this point I can give you. 
Hey, Mike, uh, Sean Pastor, Al Staley. Nice, nice to meet you, Sean. Yeah. Right. Question sort of on the other end of the transition. Um, have there been conversations uh, sort of just about the mechanics of the new league setup divisions, be it football, basketball, Olympic sports? Yes, we, we've talked to, uh, we've had, an, you know, we had an AD meeting here, you know, at, at Dickey's uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, we're looking hard at whether we should have divisions going forward with a 14 team conference. Uh, and I think, I, I can't say we've made a decision yet, but we're certainly leaning toward, toward not having divisions. We don't know yet. Uh, and the reason is uh, with the new CFP playoff plan coming, I don't know what it's going to be. None of us do obviously, but it's likely to um, include uh, be more inclusive, meaning we'll have a better shot than we've had. And, and I tip my hat to Cincinnati. You know, it's great that they made it, but you know how tough it's been for, for, you know, schools from our conference. And we've had some worthy schools not make it. So basically, you really want your top two teams playing in your championship game in football. In basketball, you know, I think only one conference of, of note plays, uh, plays divisions. You know, you just, it's just not done in basketball. And we'll, we're likely to, to keep our our 18 game conference schedule, it makes sense. It gives us an opportunity to play enough non-conference games to make an impact, which we're still trying to do, you know, as you know, uh, and it's, it's a little, it's not as easy for us because we don't have some of the challenges in place that some of the other conferences have. We worked on that. We had a, 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 a smaller one with the SEC. Uh, we're working on those. We're gonna try to get better non-conference games. But in terms of both football and basketball, I'm just not sure that divisional play really makes as much sense anymore. Now, you've, you've also seen a lot of talk from the other conferences that are 14 teams and SEC is going to be at 16, whether they want to play divisional play anymore either. And, and it's obvious, you know, if you have a, a three or four loss division champion playing a, an undefeated champion and, and that, that four loss team wins and it, you have to be a champion in order to, to be one of the top six in the playoff, for example, should we have a 12 team playoff? You know, you're going to you, you take a big risk there. You know, we had it in 2018 where we had a three or four loss Memphis team playing an undefeated UCF team. And you have in this, this in this G5 setup, which we hope eventually goes away. You had to be a, a champion to make you know, the New Year's Day game. So if UCF had lost that game, they were losing by 18 points at halftime or 17 points at halftime. If they had lost that game, we would have been out of luck. You know, so you might, you know, you might think hard about having your top two teams play. And we've had those discussions. We haven't made any final decisions yet. Um, and, you know, the, the new newcomers, people coming into the league will have some say in this as well. Obviously, the incumbents, uh, you know, have been talking about it for quite a while. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Zoom for the next question. We'll go to Chris Gardner. Commissioner, how are you? This question for you, are there plans uh, to have the basketball media day this October in Fort Worth at Dickey's Arena? Uh, right now, uh, we're, we're planning to do virtual uh, media days. Uh, it, we don't know long term what we're going to do, but we think virtual media days work pretty well. Uh, we, you know, it, it's less, less disruptive for our teams and coaches, and, and we were able to get a lot of media, you know, tuning in. Uh, who didn't have to travel, obviously, uh, you know, obviously media haven't been traveling quite as much as they once did. But some of it was related to the pandemic, but now we think that it might be something that we're going to, you know, we're going to continue to do this year. Uh, that's, that's our plan. Uh, it's also our plan for uh, football, but, you know, again, it's possible. And again, I say it's possible that in 2023, our, our new schools will come in or other three will depart. If that's the case, we would likely think hard about having a, an in-person uh, media day in football and basketball because you know you, you want to get people together if possible and uh, but for now we think it it's you know doing it virtually makes makes sense okay we'll go to the next one from terry davis please how you doing commissioner hey a couple years ago you had the challenge with the SEC. What's the likelihood of doing something else going forward with like the Big East and the Mountain West Conference in basketball? Well, you know, we're, we're talking to all the conferences and, and I'll, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't want Carl to get angry with me because he, he's probably working on some things. Uh, our goal is to, to play the best possible non-conference schedules we can. And we calibrate those based on where teams are. Obviously teams have a big say in how they wanna go about their non-conference schedules with, you know, help from the conference office. You know, we have a real pro in, in Carl and nobody better. 
And so he's going to be working with other conferences to try to develop some of these challenges, uh, you know, or mini alliances, if you will, to try to, you know, scheduling alliances to try to, you know, generate as many uh, good non-conference games as, as we can, knowing how important that is. And it's probably in some ways more important for our league because that's the way you, you know, you establish, uh, you know, credibility. Although I, I must say, I think we've done pretty well over the years in doing that. And, and certainly the tournament is, is, is proof of that. But uh, we're, we're going to continue to do that. Uh, I can't tell you which conferences, uh, you know, obviously the Mountain West is a very good conference. Uh, others are too. Um, and uh, we'll obviously focus on, uh, you know, the best games and, uh, and, and also, you know, it's not, I, I, you know, I don't want to wait to get into the weeds, but, you know, you have to be sensitive. It coaches sometimes, you know, they, they, they prefer to, you know, obviously set up their schedules. And, and so you got to be careful with, with, you know, uh, challenges, alliances, you know, it, it depends on, you know, whom they're going to play and how they want to go about it. Uh, so again, that's, that's a cooperative, uh, venture and we'll be working on it though, because uh, we do need to, uh, to make sure we play the best non-conference schedules we can. Okay. We're back in the room to Gary. I'm Mike Gary Smith with Hi, Gary. New Orleans Advocate Times speaking. Just obviously on the surface, losing the three teams you're losing, it looks like the top the conference is taking a big hit. What has to happen with the six new additions to keep this league at the level that it's it's gotten? That's a good question. You know, I, I just hearken back to ten years ago when everybody sort of gave us up for dead. You know, and they really did. And there were there were some people who clearly thought we had an opportunity there, had a chance, but there there weren't as many. Uh, and look what we did. And we did it. Uh, people said, "Well, you know, you don't have the marquee value. You don't have this. You don't have that." Well, look what we did, and uh, we'll do it again. Uh, what I think, sure, and, and by the way, I don't sugarcoat it, and I'm not being Pollyanna here, you know, losing those three schools is, is definitely uh, an initial blow, and these are really, you know, terrific schools, and the two things to say about that, one is, yeah, we, we, we hate to see them go, but the second thing is, uh, you know, I wish them well, they, they, they did a lot for our conference, but our conference did a lot for them, an enormous amount for them. If it weren't for our conference, would they be in, in the, you know, potentially going to the Big 12? I don't know that they would be, uh, to be honest with you, because our conference gave them an opportunity for incredible exposure with ESPN, with other things that we did as a conference, the way we scheduled. Uh, that's a credit to Tom and others. We, we just did a lot for them. They did a lot for us. Now, having said that, we, we targeted, you know, schools. And again, I hate this process. I mean, who, who wants to lose schools? Who wants to have to go after schools, you know? Uh, yeah, it's just Judy McLeod's a good friend. Others are good friends. You know, Bob Bowlesby and I are still good friends. We get along. You know, you can't take it personally, but it's, it's difficult. Nobody likes it. But what we did is the schools we looked at and we decided to go a little bigger. We could have stayed at 12. Instead, we went to 14. These are schools with some have already, uh, you know, done a lot. You know, when you look at UAB and what they've done in football and what they represent, and the potential and, and UTSA. And then you look at, uh, you know, the, the pedigree in basketball with North Texas right now and, and UAB historically, as well as Charlotte, North Carolina, Charlotte. FAU has done a great job. You know, they've hired good coaches. You know, they had Lane Kiffin there building that program. We think in our league, you have to look at potential. You have to look at what you think schools can do because we relentlessly promote the conference. I and mean, we don't promote it when we don't do anything, you know, good, but when we do do something good, we make sure people know about it. And, and we've done that. And I think we've done it successfully. So the question for us becomes how quickly can we rebuild and can we get to the point where, um, you know, we're, we're fighting hard again for that, that so-called P6 spot. If that, that whole P5 nonsense continues, you know, we like to get rid of the G5 business and then make it all FBS. That would be really helpful for everyone. You know, it's been pretty damaging to us. It's remarkable what this conference has achieved even with the obstacle of having that P5, G5, you know, cast system in place. But the last thing I'll say about this is that when you, when you look at these schools, Rice is willing to invest and they've got the old, um, you know, Southwest Conference pedigree. And, and, you know, you wake up the echoes there if they can get back to where they were. And, you know, several years ago, they were going to a bowl game pretty regularly. Um, if you, you look at UAB, you look at UTSA, you look at the commitment they're making. That's the other thing. We didn't take anyone who didn't, didn't you know, make it clear to us that they're going to make that commitment financially because they're going to have to come up to our level and they will. 
And, and you look at, uh, you know, we took, a, a, you know, a Charlotte and, and Mike Hill is a tremendous AD. We also looked at the people who are running, you know, and I don't want to, you know, if I, I'll mention, Ren Baker's an old friend of ours from Memphis, you know, at, at North Texas, you know, Mark Ingram's done a great job, obviously at uh, UAB, Joe Carlgard, you know, a uh, really great guy at, at Rice. And, um, you know, you, you just look at uh, others, you know, uh, I just think that Mike Hill, having worked for Jeremy Foley, knows what has to be done. And I think they have inspired leadership. I think it's really important that, uh, you know, we, uh, we continue. Um, you know, Brian White at, um, you know, at FAU has, has had a real vision for his, his, his team. I don't know if I left, left anyone out. Um, you know, uh, we have, um, you know, Oh, yeah, UTSA. Well, Lisa Campos, I mean, they've done a great job. And look at, you know, they, they re, you know, they, they re-signed a, a coach who's been very successful, you know, Jeff Trailer, and they, they really have great potential. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to make sure that uh, the schools that come in can contribute, you know, pretty quickly. And uh, this league has a way of, of, you know, there's a dynamic in this league. There's a certain DNA in this league. We're, we're challengers, you know, we, we want to compete at the highest level. I'm not arguing that we're not an unusual league. We are in that sense, because we didn't have necessarily, you know, a geographic base. But if you look at us now, you know, we're kind of horizontally, geographically fairly cohesive. You know, we've got some, some Eastern members, but, you know, horizontally across, you know, from Texas over to the East Coast. Uh, but, you know, Temple's probably our outlier, but they're in the Mid-Atlantic. And then you look at other conferences and you get the Big Ten going from Nebraska to Rutgers. You've got, you know, the vertical conference with, uh, you know, uh, the ACC going from uh, uh, Syracuse all the way down to Miami. You got Washington going all the way down to Arizona in the Pac-12. So everybody's geographically pretty disparate. Uh, but I think we've got more cohesion than we had. And with 14 teams, I think we can, you know, we can build on that. And, and ultimately, uh, don't don't sell a short. You know, they sold a short ten years ago, uh, and I don't think you know. I, I think realistically, we've we way outperform what people's expectations were, and I think we'll do the same thing. Uh, but we are losing three great teams, and, and again, I congratulate them for the great success they've had. But we're not losing them yet. You know, they're going to be here for uh, you know possibly another uh, two years or, or one year. Mike, if I could piggyback off the, one of the, the last comments about the commitment by the schools, you know, financially, specifically with Rice, um, you know, smaller, smaller university, they're playing in a, in a seventy thousand or fifty thousand seat stadium that's, you know, it's, I don't know, it's over fifty years old. When you were looking at at schools to to replace those that were leaving or to expand, did you require or did you ask for any type of assurances or? Uh, in terms of how they would upgrade, you know, that aspect of, of their athletic yeah. department? Informal ones, Joseph, but not nothing formally and right. We, did, we didn't want to, you know, you don't want to insult people either, you know, and, and, and say, oh, you have to do X, Y, Z. We, we, we take them at their word and we, we've gotten informal commitments that are, I think, really important. Also, you know, you look at a school like Rice and, and you know, the academic quality is, is, is unsurpassed. Uh, we're an athletic conference. I understand that, but it also helps to have a great, you know, academic pedigree, which we have with a lot of our schools. And our conference is a mix of really good regional and state university, uh, state universities, and private schools like Tulsa, like SMU, uh, like uh, you know Rice now, or Naval Academy, you know Tulane. Really high quality, you know, smaller private schools, but also competed at a pretty high level in athletics, obviously. So yeah, that was, you know, a lot of things went into it, but we did talk to them all about what, what is gonna have to be done in our conference uh, to compete at the highest level. And that's what we've done. It's not easy to do if, if you're us. Obviously there's no immediate deadline, so the impetus to do this might not be as strong as it was you know, a couple months ago, but is there any update on a potential new meeting of the College Football Playoff Management Committee? Yeah, that's a great question, Joseph. You know, I'm, you probably don't get me started. You know, I'm, I'm really frustrated about what happened and disappointed. It, it was just so unnecessary in my view. Um, you know, and again, you could go back to uh, what are the root causes of this? You know, Bob Bowlesby, I think, summed it up pretty well. He said, if you don't want to do something, any excuses is good at another. And we've heard a lot of different reasons why the three didn't want to do it. And some said, yeah, I was for it until I was against it. You know, others, you know, had this five plus one business, which is ridiculous. I've said it from the beginning, you know, that, that working group did a good job and, and it was a tough job. 
And I think they explained themselves well, and they, they settled on 12 as opposed to eight because eight, is, it just doesn't have any traction. An eight-team playoff, you don't have enough at larges. You know, if you really look at the 6-6 model, the 12-team model, it, it reflects the NCAA tournament in terms of, you know, the 32 automatics. It used to be 32 at larges. Now it's 30, you know, 36. Point is, uh, you have a mix between the automatics, which every, every basic, basically every tournament, every, uh, you know, playoff has, whether it's pro sports, amateur sports, and, and then you have a series of at-larges to make sure you get worthy teams. You know, the number of games is an issue, but it's not as big an issue as you might think. And we think that, you know, somebody having to play two more games than you'd have to play now to win a championship is probably going to be unlikely. This business about, well, we have to solve all the problems of college athletics before we can start a playoff. I mean, to me, that doesn't make any sense. And look, I respect the ACC. Jim Phillips is a really good friend. I sit next to him in all the meetings, and I respect Jim. Uh, and I like him personally. He's a great guy. Uh, we just have a disagreement. It's an honest disagreement. You know, again, it's not a personal thing, but we don't understand where they're coming from because think about it. You know, these problems are going to be with us. This was an opportunity, and this is a sad thing. This was an opportunity for 800 players, student athletes to participate in a playoff as early as 24, 25. I mean, think about that. That's eight more teams. Those kids, a lot of those kids will be long gone by the time a playoff starts and will never have that opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Ask our UCF kids how it felt in 2017 to be as good as they were and not have a shot, or 2018 and Houston in 2015 and even 16. And then look at Cincinnati two years ago when their team was equal to the team that made the playoff this year. Might've even been a little better, who knows? You know, the point is they didn't have that opportunity. That's what this was all about, trying to give them an opportunity a little bit earlier, putting a playoff in place for 2026 and beyond and then moving it up a little earlier. And finally, you know, the um, right now we're, we're in limbo, you know, we're sort of out in the wild blue yonder. We don't know when the next meeting is. Our presidents, uh, I think, are still talking. We have a board of managers. Uh, Gerald Turner is our rep from SMU, and he does a terrific job. Uh, I don't know when the next meeting will be, but, you know, within another year or so, we're going to have to start seriously thinking about 26. And if we don't do anything, then there's no playoff at all after 25. And I don't really foresee that we're going to you know, not have a playoff anymore. I don't think we'll take that step backward. But we could end up defaulting to four again. Uh, you know, Greg Sankey, who you know, has been an ally of ours really on this, and I respect Greg and Bob for being strong proponents of six plus six as opposed to this five plus one nonsense. And I, I respect what, what they did on the, uh, on the working group. Uh, we have a strong majority that wanted to move ahead. It wasn't quite, you know, what we needed, but it was close. And in the end, I, we're going to have to meet pretty soon at some point, you know, to uh, to get this thing moving again, uh, or we're going to default to four, uh, which the SEC has said they, they'd be fine with. They're dominating it now. Uh, but this would help everyone. Let's be honest. It's about inclusion. We only have about 3% of schools that play in this playoff. Uh, and, you know, it's football. So obviously you're not going to have as many uh, opportunities as other sports. Uh, but still, um, you know, having a 12-team playoff does create that opportunity. Uh, I, I just read that, that Greg has said he's not sure that he'll still support the, uh, the four champions getting the buys. It could be that he would support the top four teams getting a buy. Uh, I, I haven't talked to him yet about that, but I did see that recently. Uh, so I don't know where that's going, but, uh, you know, there been, there's been some acrimony. There've been some, you know, some recrimination about, well, why didn't it happen? Uh, you won't see us doing that. And, uh, you know, we have a great respect for, uh, for Mark Keenum, the chair of Mississippi state and for the, uh, the board of managers. I think they were frustrated with us that we couldn't get there. Um, and we're all frustrated, I guess, period. But, uh, we just have to keep at it. We got to make sure that somehow we get this playoff in place in 26. And, and I hope it's 12. And I, and I, I think it's six, six, it has to be six, six, because that's the only one that makes sense. Uh, you know, in my open letter, uh, I'll close by saying in my open letter, which you probably have read, I said, look, this is like the Yankees Red Sox. You know, we don't give the American league East preferential treatment because yeah, they've had the best record. They've had the best the most money. They spend the most money. They've got the best brands, but we don't say, well, the American league West isn't quite as good. You know, we don't think they're up to snuff. So therefore we're not giving them a shot, but we're uh, an automatic, but we're going to give the Yankees Red Sox division, the East division. Nobody does it that way. It's ridiculous to do it that way. It's one thing to have a bowl tie in. And one of the, we've, we haven't had that. Uh, we've had a fight for that G5 slot, which we, by the way, uh, six out of eight years and seven out of nine, if you count the year, we were still in the BCS. 
Uh, we've had to fight for that, but it's one thing to have a bold tie and that's based on ratings potential. It's based on sponsorship potential. It's based on, on brand. It's based on attendance. That's not a playoff. A playoff is totally different. It's supposed to be fair. It's supposed, you're supposed to earn it. There's not supposed to be privilege before you even play a down or you shoot a basket. So that, that's what, um, you know, what we're going to fight for. And that's, that's something, um, you know, that's something you fight for to the end because it's a really important principle. Hey, am I curious if uh, sort of the, the ongoing discord in Conference USA could have a scheduling impact in the league, you know, teams potentially needing games in the near term, next couple of years? Yeah, I don't think it will on us, no, uh, because our, our six coming in understand that they, they would come in when, when they're, you know, they're legally able to, when our other schools, you know, lead. Now, could they come in with our other schools uh, at some point? Uh, yeah, they could. I mean, we could vote to do that, but we're, we're not likely to do that. You know, we, we think at this point, we told them when we were negotiating this, that when the others left and they would leave at the latest, they would leave by July 1, 24, maybe earlier than the others could come in. We would, we would never do a schedule, you know, obviously with them uh, on it, if, if they didn't have obviously the, uh, the right to leave or uh, that we hadn't worked it out with our own conference as to how we wanted to do it. So I don't, I don't see that really being a problem for us. You know, we have a schedule in place for 22, 23, that we know that we know how we're going to operate there. We know that we've got our, our 11 teams, uh, 23, 24. Again, we don't know yet whether we're going to have, uh, you know, the new guys in at 14, whether we'll still be at 11 for one more year. Um, that's probably the more likely thing if the other three don't leave. Uh, that's the best I can, I can, you know, you know, analyze it at this point. Okay, we'll take our final question from Zoom from uh, Eric Lopez, please. Commissioner, good to talk to you again. Uh, obviously, with all this comings and goings, this affects a lot of sports, uh, in particular, a men's soccer and lacrosse. UCF has a men's soccer program, Cincinnati lacrosse. There's no lacrosse or men's soccer in the Big 12. Could they still be able to stay in the conference? Is that part of the negotiations? And also with the comings and goings, how does that impact t schools that host conference championships? I know you had to make some changes this year. How will that affect moving forward? Uh, um, first of all, the answer to your first question is yes. Uh, we, would, we would certainly entertain them staying in the conference for those sports. Again, we have great relationships with these schools, and we don't want to see them, you know, in limbo or, or not have a, an opportunity to compete. And they're also, you know, good schools, and, and we would uh, certainly, and, and we're talking to them about that. You know, John Cunningham and I spoke yesterday about their, their lacrosse program. Um, in terms of, of UCF with soccer, I don't know where that stands right now, but we've been talking to, and there've been some other, other, you know, we have some other affiliate relationships that, that come into play. Um, and then, you know, down the road, uh, I don't know, you know, what's going to happen, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, affiliate, you know, relationship. Uh, I'm sorry. The second part of your question was what, again, uh, just, just refresh. I, I just about uh, hosting, that. hosting conference championships, how that could be impacted. Because, you know, we, we have a policy that you don't host if you're if you're uh, you're leaving the conference. And we've made some exceptions to that. Uh, but the one thing we don't do uh, and we would never do is uh, deprive uh, student athletes from a school that's that a school that's leaving eventually from participating in our championships. Uh, they can absolutely participate in our championships. We've typically not had them you know, host championships if they were planning to leave. You know, there, there's, there's a policy around pretty much probably universal where you, once somebody's leaving, you know, they're not really, you know, part of a lot of the discussions because obviously there's a conflict of interest built in when they leave, you know, they're going to another conference, you know, and you're sharing information and that kind of thing. So, but we do everything we can to keep them as informed about everything. And we include them in a lot of important things and, and anything that involves health and safety or competition, they're absolutely involved in. Um, and at this point, the, the host, uh, I don't know whether we would revisit that, but we've, uh, you know, we've had a policy where you didn't host a championship if you were leaving, but we did make some exceptions to that over the years. Um, and as far as uh, competition, we welcome it and we don't take sides. We're thrilled with everybody. I, I couldn't have been happier for Cincinnati in, in the playoff, even though we know they're leaving, but having them make it and make it in our conference just felt great for him. Feel great for what Houston's doing. Uh, you know, feel terrific. Uh, UCF's had some great success. Uh, so you try to just, you know, again, try to put that off to the side and not even, even think about it. Okay, well, thank you everyone for attending in, uh, both in person and uh, via Zoom.
Uh, Commissioner, I'm sure will be available for uh, one-on-ones if anyone should need them during the course of the next two days. Uh, yeah, th thank you, Chuck. And thanks again for every, everybody uh, being here, showing interest in our conference. And thanks, Chuck, for all the work you do. And I see Morgan in the audience too, you know, Morgan Uber has done a great job, you know, hosting uh, for a minute, our TV and uh, we appreciate the work that she's doing. Great. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.